Have you ever wondered how aerodynamic you are? Well, today's your lucky day. You're inside my DIY wind tunnel. Hello, my name is Trevor, and this is project 15 on my journey to 52 projects in 2025. Out of the remaining 37 projects, most of the upcoming ones relate to aerodynamics. And this got me thinking, it would be really cool to have a way to visualize the air moving over these objects. Funny enough, they have a tool for this called a wind tunnel. And while Google told me it would cost $1.7 million to make a low-end, full-scale research wind tunnel, all I need is a small desktop version. And to do that, we're repurposing an old computer fan, the 12-volt wall adapter from some old LED lights, and some 3D prints. To get started, what is a wind tunnel? Because if you're like me, you've heard the word before, and that's about it. So let's break it down. Wind tunnels are essentially a tube with a fan on one end used to test the aerodynamics of an object. Well, actually, okay. Of course, physics and engineers worldwide couldn't let it be that simple. The tube with a fan has two major problems. One, turbulence. Their inside is likely to be turbulent. Solution, we add a honeycomb mesh at the front, which forces the air to enter the tunnel straight. Second problem, speed. The air inside the simple tube moves slow, which makes it difficult to see anything happening. To solve this, the tube isn't the same diameter all the way through. It's tapered on both ends. Why? Air moves faster in the center, which is our test chamber. Imagine our test chamber as a highway. As the cars, air molecules, accelerate on the highway and then deaccelerate. It's like they're using on and off ramps. Without these ramps, the cars would slow drastically or even stop to turn, affecting the traffic behind them. Instead of ramps, our tunnel has a plenum and a diffuser. You earn a sticker for learning how a wind tunnel works. But there's still one glaring issue. The air isn't magically visible inside the chamber, so we'll need a solution for that. And we'll come back to that later, just know we have a plan in place. We toss the current components into CAD. We start to print each piece, and of course, half choose to fail. While we wait for reprints, we start soldering electronics and cut acrylic panels for the test chamber windows. The other three prints are finished, so now we can finish assembly. Pretty straightforward. All the pieces click together and are attached using glue, tape, or plastic welds. I was actually really excited to get to try friction plastic welding with my Dremel. I saw someone do it on Instagram and, and in fact, it works. Just take a chunk of filament and tighten it inside your Dremel or drill. It does have to be kind of short, but it stuck these two pieces together. Great, we should just slip the fan in and we're done. Ugh, no. So I jumped the gun on soldering. This wire head is not going to fit through this opening. Fixed. This is the finished wind tunnel. The fan blows air this way, which sucks air through the tunnel. Air is straightened by the honeycomb screen, accelerated through the plenum, looked at in the test chamber, which has a detachable lid so we can put our test subjects in, and then finally deaccelerated through the diffuser. But now we're back to the previous problem. We can't see the air. This is just a poorly designed vacuum at the moment, and we're going for at least a poorly designed wind tunnel. How do we get there? With a fog machine. We found these cheap misters on Amazon and created a DIY fog machine that would probably get me arrested by the TSA. We repurposed one of the failed 3D prints to prop the fog machine up, and now we've got flow. Place this machine in front of the honeycomb screen and fog moves through the tunnel. With this, we can see how air moves around various objects. And that's the completed design. In future versions, I would like to incorporate the fog machine directly into the main body, but for now it works. I designed this tunnel to use in my upcoming projects, so if you'd like to see more videos like this one, I would greatly appreciate it if you subscribed. I'd be so happy if this video is the one to push me over 1,000 subscribers. With that, thank you so much for watching. All the resources I use to bring this project to life are in the description. But until next time, good luck with your own projects.